Dude, I'm so over being sick. I've had the coup five times, and if it gives you a sense of the timeline, three of them have been after the initial announcement for Aces of Thunder. I made a similar update video to this in the past where we've gone over old information, but since then, we've received more news. And as promised, I'm here to bring you guys up to date with Aces of Thunder news. So let's get into it. Since it's been a while, I'm gonna go over everything we know about Aces of Thunder and then sprinkle in some of the new things we've learned along the way. So 11 months ago, PlayStation dropped a trailer on their YouTube channel that nobody saw coming. Despite being a VR game and a PlayStation exclusive, the video quickly racked up close to 1 million views. What was revealed was that a team of developers had been working to make VR War Thunder available for PSVR for a few years, but just could not get it to function. And after realizing that the hand controls, which was the main thing that was giving them issues with implementation, would not be possible to implement within the base game, they moved on to create a separate game that could include that, i.e. Aces of Thunder. Now this means that they have to make fully interactable cockpits, so they can't just simply drag and drop aircraft from War Thunder and put them into Aces of Thunder, they need to actually do some hard developing. So they had to really choose which era of aircraft they wanted to include in their game. From the trailers, we can see they've obviously chosen World War II and more specifically, rank two to three when it comes to War Thunder equivalents. All of the aircraft included come from five different nations. They are America, Britain, Germany, Russia, and Japan with the aircraft listings as follows. From what I've been able to piece together from promotional videos and images and things that they've said, these are the aircraft coming to America. You have the P-63, the P-51C model, the P-47 Razorback, which is an interesting choice to not use the bubble canopy in a VR game, and the Helldiver. And Britain's got what looks like two variants of the Spitfire, including the Mark 5B tropical variant and the Mark 2B. Um, I'm not really sure about the Mark 2P. It could be something else, but that Mark 5 Trop uh, is almost 100% confirmed. We also have the Typhoon with their 12 machine guns and the Mosquito for their ground attacker. Uh, all of these nations try to have at least one ground attack aircraft, some of them with a backseat gunner included. So that leads us to Germany. So Germany's lineup includes two variants of the BF-109, including what is likely an F-4 and the G-2 tropical variant, uh, but I'm not too sure about those, the specific variants. Um, and then their attacker is gonna be the BF-110. Russia's got what looks like the LA-5N. They have the IL-2M uh, with the backseat gunner, the 1943 variant. And recently they showed what looks like a Yak-9T in a promotional video to show off their cockpits. To kind of stick with the theme of having two variants of some type of fighter, I would assume that the one that they would go with would be another version of the Yak, but I'm not really sure which one they would want to go with. Lastly, for the countries, we have Japan with a Ki-61 and a Zero fighter aircraft. Now I do expect at least one of those planes, like I said with the Yak just now, um, to come with two variants and for Japan to get some type of ground attacker, which is the only nation in here that doesn't seem to have one. And it's important to point out that we do actually have some extra aircraft that have been showcased for Aces of Thunder that haven't been included in this list. And we'll talk about that now. So including the P-47 with the bubble canopy, which was already shown off in a previous footage. Although if you ask me, this, more, this looks more like AI is flying um, that they just used for uh, demonstration purposes. We also see a later variant, P-51, shooting down a later variant, Falk Wolf 190, in this cover photo for the game, both of which of those planes have not been confirmed for Aces of Thunder. Now, that might be something in the future. Again, we'll get to that later. I love getting ahead of myself. But probably the biggest question and confusion in my head is the Dauntless Dive Bomber. We see it a lot in the promotional pieces. They actually showed off the backseat gunner support for the first time using that plane, but it's not shown here when they showed off the American list. And lastly, we have these AI-controlled HE-111 German bombers. You can tell by the formations they're in, both one up here and one even further back, that this is clearly AI-controlled, which in all likelihood, I don't think these aircraft will be playable. Um, I've gone into depth about why I think that in a previous video, so you guys can check that up, or check that out up here. But interestingly, this does confirm escort missions, if you ask me. I mean, they've gone through the effort of making all these AI bombers, which you don't always see in sim matches, and they certainly don't look like this. So the escort missions will probably just be attacking or defending a flight of bombers, which will be awesome. Um, the ability to use first-person hand controls to shoot down enemy planes has also been spotted, like I said, with the Douglas dive bomber. But it's unclear whether this will support two-man teams 
What I mean by that is you can have one person flying and another person as a permanent gunner position, sort of how they do it in IL-2 Sturmovik. Personally, I think this would be awesome to let me fly with people who don't necessarily like flight sims or aren't particularly good at them. I can just stick them in the back seat and they'll have a hell of a time shooting down some zero fighters. But all that is speculation, I do have to say. So actually, while we're talking about game modes, let's mention the confirmed ones. Some sort of escort missions, like we've said with the bombers, but it is important to note that this can include naval escorts and even possible convoy escorts as well. Um, a team deathmatch mode has been confirmed, as well as a ranked 1v1 with possibly more players included, let's say like a 2v2, 3v3, 4v4 situation. And I'll be honest, as somebody who has played Sim for like six to seven years now, this excites me a lot. And just taking a step back for a moment, I do wanna say that if they're going through the effort of adding ground attack aircraft like the IL-2, like the Mosquito, then we will see some form of ground attack mode to go along with it. Now, you, some of you guys might think that we just missed a few things, but we did not. Um, this may sound like a missed point to some, but they have said that Aces of Thunder will be multiplayer only. So no single player campaign or missions. Personally, I think this is great. And just let me explain. I think the devs are focusing their energy where it really matters, where the longevity is going to be important in the online mode. And I can say this knowing Gaijin's history of making campaigns, which you guys have played War Thunder, even the tutorials, even some of the historical missions, some of the historical campaign that they have going on, super duper air quotes on that. It is atrociously bad. Like they're horrible. But others are worried that Aces of Thunder's longevity without it um, will be a possible wane on the player base because it is a, fights, a flight sim exclusive to PSVR 2. That's already a small player base. Um, I think that if you add that single player mode, you're actually gonna split the player base even more and then you won't have as many in the online mode to keep it alive. That's just me personally, but I mostly play online games because I like the competitive nature of them. There will likely also be some sort of test flight system like they have in War Thunder. So if you wanna go in and just test things out, I'm sure you can do that not online. But it is important to remember that Aces of Thunder will be a flight sim. It will also have fully interactable cockpits that you can interact with with just your hand controls. Ugh. Ow, uh, that'll, be, <laughs> that'll be these. You can interact with the cockpit, including canopies, flaps, throttle, gear, ignition, obviously stick controls um, built in to, the, to be used. And if you're like me, and the thought of using virtual hand controls for a flight sim makes you throw up a little, then you're in luck because Thrustmaster HOTUS has been confirmed for Aces of Thunder. If you don't know, HOTUS stands for hands-on throttle and stick. So flight stick support is confirmed for Aces of Thunder, which is news by the way, that was initially broke when the developers directly responded to my question about it. So yeah, make sure to stick around. That being said, uh, they did have very poor communication when the game was first announced, which was my main gripe with them. That has now indeed been fixed. So no more six months of waiting to hear from the developers. Development has seemed to pick up substantially, and it seems like they are within the last stages of testing. They've said that, and they've claimed that they are running tests day and night at a stable 90 FPS for PSVR 2, which if you don't know, that frame rate will be super important to negate some of that tummy turning lag, which certain VR games tend to give. However, despite increased communication, we still do not have a release date for Aces of Thunder. And to this, I say, be patient. Let them do their thing. This is a passion project from the people who wanna provide us with a unique gaming experience and giving them arbitrary hard cap deadlines like Suits in a AAA company has not showed a historical uh, precedence of turning out quality games recently. And that's what we want. That's what we care about ultimately is the quality of this game. Quality above everything else. And that being said, I do personally expect a release date somewhere around the beginning of the summer, maybe to midsummer of 2024, so this year. And it will not be a full price game, so it seems like they've come out and said that it's gonna be like 30 to $35, but it's important to remember that unlike War Thunder, there will be no grind involved. Everything including aircraft, maps, and modes will all be available immediately upon purchase with confirmed additional aircraft coming in the future for no added cost. I mean, it, it's free DLC. And while we still don't have a release date, what we do have is my promise to you to keep you guys updated on Aces of Thunder news. 
Since March of last year, I've stayed true to my word. I made 12 videos keeping everybody posted. And not for not, but I don't see a ton of other creators covering this game. And I'm somebody who's been playing the game that it's been ported over from for seven years now, as well as making content on it. So if you're interested in Aces of Thunder, please subscribe. I'll be giving you guys all the tips when the game releases, as well as keeping you updated along the way. Thank you all for watching. Adios.